ladies and gentlemen, inductee, Coach Richard Butch Ferguson. Richard Butch Ferguson was born on September 30th, 1948, the son of Dr. Richard M. Ferguson, Jr. of Fort Payne. Doc Ferguson was an outstanding football and basketball player at Etowah High School who received a grant in aid to play football for Auburn after flying 35 B-17 missions over Germany in World War II. Butch has a sister, Patricia, and a deceased brother, Ron, who was an outstanding football player and wrestler for the Wildcats. Butch and Ron, both Eagle Scouts, are shown here with their father and grandparents, Dr. and Mrs. R. M. Ferguson, Sr., and Scoutmaster Marty Fanberg. Butch started playing junior high basketball and football in Fort Payne as a fifth grader for Coach Ray Crawford at Williams Avenue School. The glory days for Fort Payne Wildcat football were from 1962 to 65 under Hall of Fame coach Vernon Wells. Butch was a nose guard on the 1964 AAA state championship team, pictured here, and played both offensive and defensive guard in 1965 on this team that gave up only 23 points and shut out every Northeast Alabama conference opponent to win the NEAC crown. Butch was selected as honorable mention all NEAC and many of his teammates received scholarships to play in college. Butch didn't receive an offer but was accepted into the aerospace engineering program at Auburn. After helping Coach Wells with the freshmen during spring training, Butch enjoyed coaching so much that he completely changed his plans for college and enrolled at the University of Alabama as a walk-on football player for legendary coach Paul Bear Bryant. He experienced college football the next three years as a member of the scout team, along with three other walk-ons, Bob Montgomery, Jack Yoakum, and Rocky Stone. However, during his senior year in 1969, Butch was moved up to the second team where he saw some action. He played offensive guard in Coach Bryant's 100th win at Alabama versus Clemson and was later that year moved to the defense as nose guard. He is number 67 here as one of the game captains in the homecoming game against the University of Miami. Butch won his varsity letter that year, was inducted into the A club and earned a BS in mathematics. After graduation in 1970, Butch married Teresa Elliott of Birmingham. The couple moved to Lafayette, Georgia, where he served for two years as assistant football and head wrestling coach. In 1973, Coach Wells asked Butch to join him at Albertville High School as offensive coordinator and head track coach. From 1973 to 79, the Aggie staff that also included Ronnie Little, Dennis Hicks, and Bob Duke led the Aggies to four Marshall County football championships. The track team won five consecutive Marshall County and two Region 10 championships, and Coach Ferguson started the Aggies' first cross-country team, which won a region championship. He helped to coach Hall of Fame inductees Paul Teague, Rod Rudolph, and Hamp Moore, shown here signaling a TD for board member Gil Bruce. Ferguson received eight Coach of the Year awards, sponsored the FCA and Letterman's Club, and was president of the Marshall County Coaches and Athletic Directors Association. He later helped coach his son's youth baseball teams. Since turning in his whistle in 1979, Ferguson has served as Marshall County's vocational counselor and as principal and athletic director at Douglas High School, working with Hall of Fame inductee John Allen and former board member Robert Sloman. Two of his former Douglas High School coaches, Rex Mitchell and Paul McAbee, were later selected as Marshall County Coaches of the Year. In 1989, Ferguson received a Doctor of Education degree from Alabama and is shown here at graduation with his grandmother. He has since served as principal and AD at DAR High School, as Marshall County Superintendent, Assistant Superintendent and Athletic Director, and helped to initiate new football programs at DAR and Brindley Mountain High Schools. In 2002, Butch was among Alabama's first class of certified athletic administrators and authored an article in the NIAAA Journal extolling the heroic actions of the 9-11 heroes brought about by lessons learned from athletic participation. Butch has served as an officer on the Marshall County Sports Hall of Fame Board of Directors since its inception in 2001. He still enjoys working with the Boy Scouts of America and has received the Whitney M. Young Award for Service to Youth 
and the BSA Community Service Award. Butch is also the area director for the People to People Student Ambassador Program and enjoys leading students in international educational travel programs. He also enjoys playing golf, working out at the powerhouse gym, and attending UA football games and team reunions. Butch and Teresa have been blessed with three children, Christy, Lee, and David, and four grandchildren, Max and Katie Parker, and Ethan and Tiger Ferguson. Ladies and gentlemen, 2009 inductee, Coach Richard Butch Ferguson. I'd like to say a few things about this guy. It, it wasn't mentioned in all the things that you've seen up there on the board. I've been working, I've worked, worked with this guy for since 2002 on the, uh, 2001 on the Marshall County Board of Directors and the others in here too can attest to this. This is a guy that keeps things going. If they don't, then he reminds us and keeps us on track. And I really appreciate the opportunity that I've had in the past years to work with this guy and continue to work with him. Congratulations. Since Teresa said keep it short, I better uh, pull out my speech, <laughs> my notes. Um, I, I said I want to start with a, a really short story, and those of you that know me, Shannon knows I've got a story every time I talk about Coach Wells or Coach Bryan or some of the players, Gil Bruce, some of those players I played with. But since Paul Tigg is here tonight, one came to mind really, really quickly. Um, when I was coaching track at, at Albert, well, Paul was a great shot putting discus thrower, but he didn't do any running events. And uh, we were running at the old 220 track at Boaz, if y'all remember that, before we built the 440 track. But um, they got through with the field events, and Paul and a bunch of them were horsing around. They, they were through for the day, so they thought they'd just horse around and, uh, and, and play with each other, and uh, they got me mad. And I made all of them run the mile when it came time for the mile run. You remember that? Uh, made most of them mad, but Paul came up to me afterwards. He said, Coach Ferguson, you know I'll do anything you ask me to, but I want to, don't want to run that third mile anymore. And I said, well, if you'll behave yourself, you won't have to. And you know what? All those guys that ran just the field events behaved pretty well after they had to run the mile one time. So I'll leave the stories at that. If anybody wants to know any good uh, Coach Wells stories or Coach Bryant stories, I'll be glad to tell them later. I have a lot of people to thank, and I'm just going to do it as quickly as I can. And, and I wish I could thank every person in here individually because there's a lot of you that have touched my life and influenced my life in a lot of ways. First, I want to thank God for giving me the family, the people, the experiences that he has to help me uh, in my life. And without those things, uh, I would not be where I am today. Personal thanks go to Bill Wharton and the late Dr. E.F. Porch and Coach John Allen that I worked with at Douglas for nominating me for this. Um, a lot of school teachers and administrators and scoutmasters like Marty that's here with me tonight, Coach Ray Crawford over there, that, that helped influence me in a positive way, uh, a lot of times mentally, physically, morally, and I appreciate the things that they did for us. Uh, I want to thank all of the coaches I had. Coach Crawford was my first junior high coach. Y'all don't believe this because the rules have changed. I went out for football and basketball when I was a fifth grader, and he didn't run me off. There are a lot of days I wish he would have because I, that was hard on a fifth grader playing with seventh and eighth graders. But uh, for some reason, he didn't run me off, and it, it really made a difference in my life because I learned right then that it didn't matter how tough it got, I wasn't going to quit. And that carried with me all the way through my athletic career at Alabama and everywhere else, and I appreciate that. Coach Wells, that I could speak for an hour and a half about, Coach Wells was a tough guy. A lot of you guys from Albert were played with him. He had a great sense of humor, but he demanded that you do things the way he wanted to. And, 
And one of the things that I remember so much about Coach Wells is that just like Coach Bryant, he knew when to get after you and he knew when to pat you on the back. And again, uh, I remember one time, uh, the year we won the state championship, we were behind center six to nothing at the half. I was starting nose guard. We had a preacher who went to us, went to the ball games with us named Brother Royal. He was a Methodist preacher. And we were going into the dressing room, and I heard Coach Wells stop him on the way in and said, you don't need to go in here tonight. And he gave us a royal cuss, and he pointed his finger at me right before we went out, and he said, you're not ever going to another ball game for me, Butch Ferguson. And he pointed at a little 10th grader named Terry Reed, who ended up was a very good ball player, said, you're going in nose guard. I don't think my dad, I don't think anybody knows this, hadn't told him. But when we got back on the field, Terry Reed grabbed my arm and he said, do you think Coach Wells really meant that? I said, no, he's just trying to get me fired up. I ran out on the field expecting all the time to hear a double cuss word and uh, my, my arm grab. But he never said a word to me. Went out there. We ended up, we won the game 34-6 to six and went on to win the state championship. But that's the kind of guy he would. He knew where to get on to you. He knew how to pat you on the back. When I went to Alabama, he's the one that encouraged me. And he said, you know, you're not the biggest guy. You're not the strongest guy. You're not the fastest guy. I expect him saying, you need to be concentrating on your books. But he said, no, I think you can make it. And that's the kind of encouragement he gave me. And I appreciate that so much. But all the way up uh, through Coach Bryant and assistant coaches that I had at Alabama, these people helped me develop and taught me lessons that endure with me to this day. I want to thank the players that played with me at Fort Payne and at uh, Alabama. I'm the least one of any of those players that needs to go into any kind of Hall of Fame. And I thank the players at Albertville particularly where I coached, not just the great players, not just the Paul Tiggs and the Rod Rudolphs and the Hamp Mowers and the Gil Bruces, but the ones I identified with the most were those kids who were a lot like me that didn't have a lot of ability, but they really did try hard and they really, really did give everything they've got. And uh, those are the kind of people that I think really, really connected with me. And, you know, you, you can have some great players that help you win games, but you also got to have 10 or 15 of those kind of average ability kids that play a lot above their ability. Isn't that right, Coach Chaffin? They got to play above their ability if you're going to have any success. And we had real good success. Paul knows this. We, won, we had three straight winning seasons at Albertville in the, in the mid-70s. They haven't won two straight, I don't think, since then, and they certainly hadn't won three. So we, we appreciate the job that they did, and I appreciate them a lot. But most of all, I want to thank my family, starting my, with my grandparents that you saw in the video who helped to rear me when I was very young, uh, my sister Patricia and my brother Ron, who's deceased. Uh, we had a close-knit family, and I really appreciate them and all they've done for me growing up. But I especially want to thank my dad, Dr. Ferguson, who's here with me tonight. Uh, when I was six years old, he moved his office into our home and raised three children by himself. When he did this, he didn't just raise us or rear us, he also was involved in everything we did. He was the quarterback club president and the band booster president scout master, PTA president. Um, he was at everything we ever did. Uh, Patricia, we thought he was there too much, didn't we? And, uh, but you know what? In the schools today, I look around, and there are hundreds of kids that suffer because they don't even have one parent that cares enough to get involved with them. And uh, we were very fortunate. My final tribute goes to my uh, lovely wife, Teresa, who stuck with me for almost 39 years. Uh, somebody said something to her about that the other day, said, yeah, I said, I've had him so long, I, I can't trade him off for anything good. And so I uh, reckon I better stick with him. Uh, 
but she's been a wonderful mother to our children. She sacrificed a lot for us. Uh, she's been the one that was always there everywhere we went, every time we did something, every time our kids did something, she was always there. Every ball game I coached, she was always dragging those kids up and down the bleachers. And, uh, and we appreciate that, and we love her for all the sacrifices that she made. My children, Christy, Lee, and David. Uh, Lee is in China working. David's in Washington, D.C., not here. My daughter, Christy, is here. Uh, they have been the source, source of uh, pride and joy in our life uh, for our whole time together. And uh, I know that there were times during my career in education when probably I sacrificed uh, being with them to do some things with other people. But I appreciate their support, and I appreciate everything they've done, and I love them very much. And um, I just want to thank you all but because without the support of the family and friends and the people I've worked with, like back there, John Allen, Richard Hayes, uh, I would not be here tonight, and I just appreciate everything y'all have done. Thank you very much.